You're the headmaster of a fun sciences school. Today is the final day of the semester. You have to handle all upcoming problems and make sure all the students will pass the difficult exams. All teachers except for the professor of memology are waiting in their classrooms. You walk through the school corridors, greet the students, and go to your office. You have a separate drawer where you put all the keys to all the school doors. You throw the office key there, sit down at the table, and notice that some documents have disappeared. Someone has stolen the answers to a video games test. But how did they get into your office? The door and windows were closed. Take a look at the ventilation gate. It's slightly open. Apparently, one of the students broke in there early in the morning. Your secretary is knocking on the door. You say that you're busy and ask to come later. Then, you sit down at your computer, open YouTube, and watch funny videos. The internet signal disappears. Someone has turned off the electricity at the school. You go to the basement with generators. There, you see a turned off switch and three people standing next to it. They all say they didn't touch anything, but one of them is lying. The janitor says the lights went out when he came here to clean up. Louise is a new student. She says she was lost in the building and accidentally got here. Richard is a last year graduate. He came here to find a miniature toy horse, a souvenir he hid many years ago. Which one of them is lying? The janitor has a bucket and mop, so he's not lying. You see a horse in the corner of the room, so Richard is telling the truth. Louise is a liar. She said she's new, but it's the end of the semester. She can't be new at this time. You're the headmaster, and you would know in advance if there was a new student at your school. Louise admits she turned off the electricity to disrupt the sleep science exam. You turn the power back on and go to the dining room to have breakfast. You order coffee, sit down at the table, and meet an angry chef. He says that one of the students poured a bag of sugar into a pot of soup. You're looking around the room. Who do you think did this among all these guys? They all have deep plates with soup and spoons, but this guy has a plate with a fork. He wouldn't eat the soup because he knew it tasted disgusting. You finish your coffee and head to the office. You walk through a long corridor and see graffiti on a huge photo of a crazy dog, a mascot of the school. The guard catches three students. One of them must have ruined the image. Can you guess who did it? Here's a guy hiding his hands. Indeed, there are traces of paint on them. You're walking through the internet history room where an exam has just started. There's silence in the audience. Students are writing a test, but one of them is cheating. Find them. Look at this girl. A wire stretches from her sleeve to her ear. Someone is giving her the right answers through her headphones, and that guy is looking at the answers written on his leg. Someone activates the alarm. All students run out of the school. You make sure that everyone is outside. You head to the exit and notice there is no flame anywhere. You can't even smell the smoke. Someone turned on the alarm to disrupt the exams. You catch three students. One of them is guilty. But who? Alex says he was in the toilet when the panic started. Amanda was taking a meme test. Luke was sleeping in the dining room. Which one of them is lying? Amanda turned on the siren. The memeology professor isn't there, remember? So she obviously wasn't taking that test today. You go outside and meet the school gardener. He says that someone has cut the roses in the schoolyard. The gardener saw three people who could be suspects. You bring them into the yard and ask about roses. Lewis says he was in the library all day. Mary was taking an exam on internet history. John was training at the gym. Which one of them is lying? Look at Lewis. His sleeves are torn. Roses have thorns. He probably damaged the shirt when he was cutting the flowers off. 
You pass by the dining room and hear some strange noises. Someone is obviously tired and breathing heavily. You look inside and see two guys at the table. They're arm wrestling. One of them looks angry and aggressive. He's shaking his hand and trying his best. The other is calm. Who do you think will win? The guy on the right. He holds onto the edge of the table and doesn't waste his strength on unnecessary movements. He will defeat the angry opponent. You enter the trends room. You heard a lot about this subject and a young teacher who has a unique approach to the science of popularity. She tells you that she has asked all her students to create a new profile in the social network for their pets at the beginning of the semester. Now, all the students must show the number of subscribers and likes. The one who has the most popular profile will get a high score on the exam. Students show photos of their pets, mini pig, hamster, cat, goldfish, chameleon, dog, goose, hamster, raccoon. All the photos are pretty popular, but two of them are fake. Which ones? The hamsters. Two students have identical photos. They must have found those online. You're observing a pseudo-philosophy exam. The teacher gives blank sheets of paper to all students. Then he says, There's a lot of supposedly philosophical phrases on the internet that seem too pretentious, obvious, and stupid. People love to attribute quotes to famous persons that they never said. So there's a person who can say anything that can be true or false. They can say both good and bad things, and no one in the world can prove that this person didn't say that. The authorship of this person is unquestionable. Who is this person? After five minutes, the students give back their papers. They all have names of famous athletes, scientists, billionaires, and entrepreneurs on them. No one has passed the exam except for one girl. She wrote just one word. Which one? Anonymous. You walk around the school and hear someone screaming. Several students are running away from the biology classroom. They say a poisonous snake has escaped from the terrarium and now it's crawling in the room. It's too dangerous to have lessons here. You call the rescuers, but to catch the snake, you need to find it. Look around carefully and find the reptile. Take a look at the picture with snakes in the far corner of the room. One of these snakes is real, as its tail goes beyond the painting. Your next problem is in the parking lot. The professor of magic tells you that someone has punctured a tire on her car. Apparently, one of the students took revenge on the teacher for a bad grade on the exam. Fortunately, there's an extra tire in the trunk. But here's the problem. You don't have four bolts to attach it. How can you help the teacher? Unscrew one bolt from the other three wheels and attach them to the new one. Each of the three wheels has three bolts now. That's enough to get to the nearest car service. You come to your office to take a nap, but hear a sudden cracking noise. You find pieces of glass in the yard. Someone has broken a window on the third floor with a stone. You need to figure out who did this among three suspects. A cook, a gardener, and a student. The cook says he was in the kitchen making burgers. The gardener claims that he was watering the roses in the garden. The student says he was sitting in the library at the time. Which one of them is lying? The gardener. One of the students has cut those roses, remember? So the gardener didn't have any roses to water. Finally, the day is coming to an end. All students have passed their exams and are going home. You walk through a long corridor and hear a knock. Several people are stuck in the gym and can't get out. They've lost their keys and the door only opens from the outside. You need to help them, but where can you find the keys? You have the drawer in your office with the keys to all the school doors, remember? You unlock the gym. Then, you finally sit in your office and watch YouTube. You have solved all the problems. 
You deserve a good rest now. John's father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John. His father has three sons, Jack, Jason, and him, John. One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get a detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test. The next person on the list wouldn't skip as well. And so on until the end of the list. Randy was at home, sitting in his chair with a book. Suddenly, his sister's super expensive vase fell and broke in the living room. He ran there in time to see a stranger jump out of the window and run away. Randy tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't see the person. When the police arrived, they immediately knew he was lying. He'd broken the vase himself. How did they know? Glasses don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Michael Winston, who dislikes modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet, the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Winston for his actions. How come? Michael was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more exhibits. Look at this line of people at the checkout in a supermarket. They're all a colorful bunch, but one of them is trying to sneak out food out of the store. Can you tell who just by looking at them closely? You might have thought it was the pregnant woman because of the fake tummy, but look! She's wearing comfy sneakers without shoelaces so that she could slip them on easily. The guy in a baggy hoodie sure looks suspicious, but it's not food he's hiding inside his pockets. It's a kitten! And the real culprit is the guy behind him. Look at his sleeves. One of his arms looks way bigger than the other. He must be hiding something in there. A man dressed in black from head to toe was walking in the middle of the road. All of a sudden, a huge black car with its headlights off came around the corner and screeched to a halt, not to hit him. How on earth did the driver of the car see the man in black? Well, the only reasonable answer would be that it was in broad daylight. Nobody said it was nighttime after all. Three college friends met after a summer break and were sharing stories about their vacation. Lily described how she and her boyfriend had gone to Paris and seen the city from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Dylan told his friends that he had traveled to Africa with his parents. But on their last day, there was a massive volcanic eruption and it didn't spoil their vacation only because they flew home that day. And Ellie said that she had visited her uncle in Texas and learned how to ride a horse. One of the stories was fake, though. Which one? Dylan's story is fake. He couldn't fly home on the day of the eruption because when something like this happens, all flights get canceled. Mark and Amy got stranded on a tiny uninhabited island full of sand and rocks, but not much else. They had no radio or cell phones, and there were no trees on the island to make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amy noticed a plane circling the sky in search of them. She got a bright idea to make it notice them. 
Soon after, the plane picked them up. What was Amy's idea? She suggested using rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. Mike was studying for a big test in the school library. It was already late when he finished up and suddenly heard someone shouting for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked classroom door. Mike rushed there and opened it. Inside, there was his classmate, Brad. He told Mike that he'd gone to grab a bite in the cafeteria, only to find it was closed that day. Suddenly, he blacked out. And the next thing he knew, he was locked in the classroom. Mike promised to find out who had done this. By morning, Mike had four suspects in mind. When school started, he interrogated them. Matthew told him he'd been doing his homework in a classroom. Emily said that she'd been with Matthew, but later she'd gone home. Olivia claimed that she'd been having lunch in the cafeteria. And Chris explained that he'd been sick that day. It took Mike no time to figure out who was guilty. It was Olivia. She couldn't have been eating lunch in the cafeteria because it was closed that day. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on the door. She looked through the peephole and saw an unfamiliar man. He said, Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called hotel security. Can you figure out why? The badge on the man's chest says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name. She knew the man was a fake manager. Emma's mother asked the girl to go to the supermarket and gave her a shopping list and a bank card. But in case Emma forgot the card's pin, her mom also gave her a little clue. When Emma was already at the checkout, she took the clue out of her pocket and immediately recalled the code. Can you say what number it was if the clue was a sheet of paper with a fly, a cat, a girl, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Emma just had to count the number of legs of each creature. Littlefield was a tiny village where nothing ever happened. But one day, Mr. Richardson, a rich farmer, arrived at the police station in tears, saying that two of his best cows were missing. There were three suspects, and each of them had to answer one question. Have you taken your neighbor's animals? Mr. Anderson said that he and Mr. Richardson had a common business and that he wouldn't risk their partnership. Mrs. Martinez stated that she'd been living in this village since birth and she wouldn't spoil her reputation because of some animals. And Mr. Jones explained that his family had been breeding pigs for centuries and he didn't have any reason to steal cows. The police officer figured out who the criminal was. Can you? The thief is Mr. Jones. How did he know that it was cows that were stolen? Nobody had told him the animal species. A woman was having breakfast at a nice restaurant. At one moment, she noticed a fly in her coffee. She was indignant and made the waiter bring her another cup. After he returned with a new cup of coffee, she shouted, What's with this service in this place? You've just brought me the same cup of coffee. How did she understand it? She had already put sugar in her previous cup of coffee. When she tried the new one, it was sweet. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and see that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches its rim. 
If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. One famous magician is performing on the stage. He's going to show his most spectacular trick. But unfortunately, only one viewer has come to the show. The magician puts eight different cards on the table and covers them with a black cloth. He asks the viewer to come closer. Now you'll see two rows of four cards. I want you to select only one of them, but very quickly. Ready? The magician says. He lifts the cloth for one second, then covers the cards again. The viewer has chosen one card. The magician looks at him and whispers, Now close your eyes. Think about the card. Think of nothing else. I'm going to read your mind now. The spectator closes his eyes. After a few seconds, the magician tells him, Look at the table. I've removed your card and replaced it with a new one. The guy opens his eyes and it's magic. The magician has indeed removed the card he thought about. But how did he do it? There's no magic here. The magician replaced all the cards on the table with new ones. But the viewer didn't notice this since he was only focused on one card. Johnny is on a deserted island. He walks through the jungle and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out from behind the trees. We've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You won't take it, one of them says. Johnny notices that something is wrong with these guys. They seem fake. But why? This pirate is wearing sneakers, see? The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third pirate has a price tag attached to his saber. A famous courier service hires new staff. To get the job, candidates need to take a package and run a marathon in three hours. They easily cope with this task. Then, the boss asks them to swim the distance of the Olympic pool. One of the candidates stops halfway through the distance to take a breath. He drops out of the race. It leaves us with three participants. Now they have to pass a test in nuclear physics. Only two candidates make no mistakes. The third guy fails. And the last task is to conquer Everest. And here they are, climbing to the top. Remind me, what salary do they offer? One of them asks. $20 per hour, the second candidate answers. Finally, they get to the peak and meet the boss there. He looks at them and says, You both have made it so far, but I'll hire only one of you. Who will get this job? The first candidate. He's still carrying the package he got before the marathon. Two powerful film producers are having a breakfast in an expensive restaurant. They discuss the budget for a sequel to a very successful movie that got $500 million at the box office. They speak very quietly since they mention important details of the script. They suspect that someone might overhear them. The producers are right. Some curious people are indeed eavesdropping on their conversation. Find them. There's a guy at the table holding a magazine upside down. Obviously, he isn't reading it. He must be listening to the producers. That girl over there is a journalist. There's a camera lens sticking out of her backpack. See? She will post a video and fans will be able to read the producer's lips. That man is eating a salad, but you can notice a microphone hidden in his long hair. Three people are standing in front of an ice cream cart. The first guy is taking a cone from the cellar. The guy behind him is nervous. His hands are in his pockets. The third guy is looking at something through binoculars. Which of them is a police officer? Look at the first guy. He's got a police radio in his pocket. Where's my money? The owner of a diner screams. It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no clients in the diner. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees, trying to figure out who's the thief. 
Linda is wearing a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a stylish t-shirt. She also has an expensive phone. Michael is dressed in costly designer clothes. Sarah is wearing a regular jacket and a long skirt. Who do you think has stolen the money? They're all telling the truth. Look at the sign on the door. Open, it says. This means people passing by the diner see the closed sign. The employees forget to turn it over, and that's why there have been no clients. Michael is walking down a long road. He's sweaty, hungry, and thirsty. There are no cars around, and his phone isn't working. Michael takes a few more steps and sits down on the road. He can't walk anymore. At this moment, he hears a vehicle approaching. A big bus appears on the road. It stops by Michael. Its doors open, but Michael doesn't get inside. He notices a car and a motorbike approaching. They stop by him too. All the drivers offer to give Michael a ride. What should he choose? The bus seems normal, but one of its tires is flat. The trip won't last long. Look at the biker. His face is hidden by a helmet, but he has hooves instead of feet. Mike chooses the car. One video blogger has been walking across a desert for several hours. The guy has no water left and he's losing strength, but his camera battery is fully charged. He climbs a small hill and sees three lakes, but not all of them are real. Help the blogger to identify illusions. He has a video camera. He should film the lakes. Mirages can't be recorded. A biker is traveling along a country road when he hears a scream. A woman is calling for help. She seems to be in the forest. The biker drives in her direction and sees three girls among trees. They're all begging to save them from a vampire. But which of you is the vampire? The man asks. It's her! The girl screams and points at one another. How can the biker find out who is human? There are two side mirrors on the motorcycle. The biker needs to turn the handlebars to check which girl has a reflection. Martin likes visiting abandoned factories and other buildings. Today, he's going to check a huge deserted shopping mall located on a remote island. According to some legends, the Minotaur lives inside the building. The creature looks like a human with a bull's head. Of course, Martin doesn't believe that. He takes a flashlight, a warm blanket, and a night vision camera. It's dark and cold inside. Martin hears a strange noise coming from the corridor. He shines a flashlight and sees the Minotaur. The monster looks angry. It aims its horns at Martin. What should the guy do? Faster! The bull is about to attack! Remember that blanket that Martin took with him? The guy should throw it at the monster's muzzle to confuse the creature and escape. Michelle is in front of a locked door. An axe, a hammer, and a drill, and several other tools lie nearby. The girl tries to break down the door with the axe, but the door is metallic. Then, she tries to knock the door out with the hammer, and again, no result. Don't try to force it open. There's an easier way, a creepy voice says. Michelle tries to open the door by turning the handle, but it doesn't work either. What else can she do? Michelle should knock on the door. Starry sky, fresh cool air, endless dunes, a small campfire, and a tent. This place is a fairy tale. Sarah has always wanted to spend a night in a desert. She takes pictures of the stars, drinks hot tea from a thermos, and enjoys life. It's a perfect night. Too perfect. A smile disappears from Sarah's face. Everything is not real. Two signs indicate that Sarah is sleeping right now. What are these signs? Two moons are shining in the sky. A sea crab is looking at Sarah from the sand. But it's scorpions that usually live in deserts, not sea crabs. 
Mary opens her eyes and realizes that she's in an unknown place. The last thing she remembers is walking in the park and then darkness. There's a lot of trash in the room. A red lamp is flashing from the ceiling. Something must have happened here. Mary can leave through the door. It's open. But wait, she needs to take some useful stuff from the room. But what? She can only choose two items. Which ones? Mary needs to get scuba gear and a mask. Look at that small window. Fish are swimming by. Mary is underwater. Alex returns to his top floor apartment after a workout at the gym. He turns on his stove to cook some soup. When he's having lunch, someone knocks on the door. These are water utility workers. They say that the ceiling in Alex's apartment is about to collapse because his neighbors forgot to turn off a faucet. And now they're flooding the building. They ask the guy to evacuate immediately. Alex closes the door and calls the police. He's sure those two are thieves. How has Alex figured that out? He lives on the top floor. No one can flood him. Molly works at a veterinary hospital in a safari park. First thing in the morning, she feeds this animal. Can you guess its name? That's right, it's a panda. After that, she brings food to this animal. Can you guess its name? It's a bear. Great job! Then Molly feeds this guy. Can you crack this rebus? It's a tiger. After feeding the tiger, Molly says hi to this animal. Have you guessed its name? Right, it's a monkey! After lunch, Molly takes care of these creatures. Any ideas who they could be? Butterflies! Great job! One day after breakfast, Molly checked money donations for the animals. A crow got $7, a ladybug received $21, and a spider got $28. Based on this information, how much money will the tiger get? The tiger will get $14 because it has four legs. Each animal received $3.50 per leg. Molly went to the kitchen to have lunch. Usually, she prepares her food at home and brings it to work in the lunchbox. But this time, she saw that someone had stolen her lasagna from the fridge. Molly got very upset and questioned her colleagues. Mike said, I haven't been to the kitchen today. I was too busy bathing our hippo. Melissa said, I spent this morning cleaning the pool. I didn't touch your food. And Alina said, I had business lunch with investors downtown. I've just arrived. Who is lying? Melissa. Look, the pool is still dirty. Mike offered Molly a deal. I'm going to give you my lunch if you crack this riddle. I'm an odd number. Take away one letter and I'll become even. What number am I? Can you help Molly? The correct answer is 7. Molly received an emergency call from one of the guards. Someone had released all their parrots. Molly interrogated three people who were standing nearby. Jack said, "Mm, I didn't see anything, lady. I went blind 10 years ago. I come to this park to listen to bird songs. Rachel said, 
I'm afraid of birds. I can't even come close to them. And Peter said, I was just passing by. Can you tell me where the restroom is? Who's lying? It's Jack. If he's really blind, why did he bring this camera? Molly walked around the park. She had to find all the parrots before her boss arrived. How many parrots can you see in this picture? I see five. What about this image? Can you see any parrots among other birds? Here they are! After rescuing all the birds, Molly finally sat down to get some rest. But suddenly, she received a strange message full of complaints. Something really weird was going on with animals in the park. Molly rushed outside to check on the situation. Can you help her figure out what's so weird here? This monkey has a goat leg. What about this image? This fish is definitely from another planet. What about these tigers? What's wrong with them? They have five legs instead of four. Molly went to the warehouse to get some food for fish. When she tried to open the door, she realized that her boss, Alina, had changed the code. Can you help Molly figure out the new password? Look at this note. It says tiger, cat, leopard, wolf, lynx. That's a little hint, since one word is different from the others. The correct password is wolf. This is the only animal that doesn't belong to the cat family. The lights inside the warehouse suddenly went out. Molly got lost. After wandering around the building for a while, she found three doors. But behind each of them, there was a trap. Hungry lions hid behind the first door. Instead of the floor, there was a pool swarming with fish behind the second door. And venomous snakes were waiting for Molly behind the third door. Which way should she choose? The second door is the safest option. Molly can use the diving suit that lies in the corner of the room. Also, Molly can feed the fish along the way. Molly and her colleague Mike were going home after work late at night. Suddenly, they saw their boss, Alina, talking to bats. They snuck in closer and hid behind a bush. Alina looked like a vampire and laughed like a freak. Next morning, Molly and Mike decided to check whether Alina was a human or a monster. It was her birthday, so they brought her two bouquets of flowers. But Alina accepted only one of them. This was when the guys learned for sure that Alina was a real vampire. How did they know? They hid garlic in the second bouquet. Alina invited all her colleagues to her birthday party. Molly didn't want to come alone, so she uploaded a dating app, hoping to meet someone special. Oh, no. Here are several pictures of nice guys, but one of them lives with his girlfriend. Can you tell who? It's this one. There's a pair of high heels and a dress in his closet. Alina asked Molly to arrive earlier to help her prepare for the party. Molly was cooking snacks in the kitchen when she heard a scream. She ran into Alina's room and saw her crying on the bed. Someone ruined her party dress while she was taking a shower. Molly interrogated three suspects. 
Kim, the cleaning lady, said, It's not my job to take care of Alina's clothes. I was cleaning the house all day. Sam, the gardener, said, I've been hanging string lights and decorating the garden for the party. I haven't even entered the house yet. And Alina's sister, Lily, said, I didn't touch it. But anyways, this dress didn't suit Alina at all. Purple is my color. Everyone in this family knows that. So, who ruined the dress? Sam. Look, the string lights are still in the box. At the party, Uh Molly saw Mike with a mysterious lady. The lady was wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Molly. So, Molly couldn't see her face. Mike and the lady hid from everyone in Alina's library. Later that night, Molly entered the library too, but it was empty. After checking the room, Molly knew for sure which of these three ladies was Mike's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The second lady is wearing only one earring. She lost the second one in Alina's library, and Molly found it on the carpet. Alina called the police early in the morning. Officers arrived at her place and questioned her. She said, My husband and I had a romantic dinner last night, but at some point we had an argument. Then he felt sick. At least he said so, but I didn't believe him. He always tends to exaggerate things. So I slammed the door shut and left. I came back home in the morning and saw him unconscious on the floor. I don't know what happened to him. The officers immediately arrested Alina. Why? If the candles had been burning all night long, they would have burned out by now. Molly had a school friend. Her name was Sarah. One day, they went on a picnic with their families. Sarah's mother was very eccentric. She had pink hair and always wore glitter. And she took her pet iguana, Tom, everywhere she went. She also has three daughters. The oldest daughter's name was Monday, and her middle daughter was called Tuesday. Can you guess her youngest daughter's name? This is Sarah's mom, so it's pretty obvious that her youngest daughter's name is Sarah, right? Rick had a job interview at the hospital. He had been dreaming of becoming a vet all his life. Molly liked his resume, so she decided to test his logical thinking with one final riddle. She gave him this list of months and asked just one question. Which month comes next? Can you help Rick out? It's September. The months on this list go from those with the least number of letters to those with the most. It's time to groom the animals. Molly hired a group of talented groomers. Two groomers can groom two animals in two hours. In this case, how many animals would four people groom in four hours? Your first instinct was probably to say four animals. But in fact, the correct answer is eight. And it makes sense, because four groomers would groom four animals in two hours. And in four hours, this number will double. I'm something people love or hate. I change people's appearances and thoughts. If a person takes care of themselves, I will go up even higher. I can fool some people. To others, I'm a mystery. Some people might want to try and hide me, but I will still show. No matter how hard people try, I will never go down. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is age. One of these three people is left-handed. Can you guess who? It's the waiter. 
It's easier for lefties to hold a tray in their right hand and serve dishes and drinks with their left hand. Okay, let's go. We'll start with checking your vision. All you need to do is read the word. Let's go. What's written here? It says vampire. Next one. Can you read it? Is meta. Another one for you. Look closely. Right. It says snowflake. Next one's up. Are your eyes sharp enough to read it? This is meadow. Another one for you. Look closely. Yeah, that's waterfall. Now I'll be showing you some pictures, and your task will be to find all the hidden objects in each of them. Here's the first one. You need to find the five objects you can see at the bottom of the screen. Okay, here's where they are. Did you manage to find all of them? One more for you. Concentrate, and keep in mind, you can pause the video if you need it. Great! One, two, three, four, and five. I hope you spotted them all. Emma Lynn is an archaeologist working in Africa. She has accidentally gotten stuck in a cave, and there are just three ways out. Her map shows that if she goes left, she'll come to a pond that pulls everything in. If she goes straight ahead, she'll run into dangerous dinosaurs that eat everything they see. If she goes right, she'll find herself very close to an erupting volcano. Which way is safe? The road leading ahead. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. It was Dana's birthday, and her best friends had prepared a gift for her. But first, the girl had to find it. They gave her a note with a hint. Do you know how Dana can read it? It looks as if the note doesn't make sense, but it does. The text is mirrored. That's why she can read it with the help of a mirror. Let's see. So it says, your present is in the laundry basket in the basement. Cheryl had to sneak into her dad's computer to delete some emails she had accidentally forwarded him. Her dad had memory problems, so luckily for Cheryl, he always left notes with his passcodes. And indeed, one of such notes was right on his desk. Cheryl typed in 6989. Unfortunately, this passcode was wrong. Can you figure out the correct one? The note was simply turned upside down. Cheryl should try 6869. Reese was on vacation in Cyprus. One day, he saw a beautiful woman and asked her out on a date. The woman said that she would go out with him, but only if he guessed her name. He said it was impossible, and she gave him a hint. The capital of Spain, the capital of Austria, the capital of Romania, and the capital of Australia. Can you help Reese figure out what the woman's name is? The capital refers to the capital letters of these countries' names. So, S, A, R, and A. The woman's name must be Sarah. Yvonne has four frogs, Dot, Hoppy, Yoda, and Aristotle. One of them is black and green and three of them are black and blue. Find out which color each of them is if Dot and Hoppy are of the same color, Aristotle isn't black and green. If Dot and Hoppy are of the same color, 
then they must both be black and blue, since there's only one black and one green frog. If Aristotle isn't black and green, then it's black and blue too. So Yoda is black and green. Honor and Alea are identical twins. After they were born, Honor had her birthday 22 times. But Alea only had her birthday 5 times. How is it possible? They were born on a leap year. Honor was born late at night on February 28th, let's say at 11.59 p.m. And Alea was born a bit later, at 12.01 a.m. It was already February 29th, which only occurs once every four years. Now let's relax a bit and try to guess some movies. I'll show you some combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess the movie. Ready? Here's the first one. What's your guess? Of course, it's everyone's favorite, Edward Scissorhands. Okay, here's the next one. You must know it. It's The Devil Wears Prada. Can you guess this one? It's Million Dollar Baby. Moving on. You just can't get it wrong. Obviously, it's Home Alone. There's no other story like this one. Can you guess this movie? This reverse transformation reminds me of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I have a couple more for you. I love this movie. Do you know it? It's Interstellar. And how about this one? What's your guess? This one is I Am Legend. In the afternoon, Detective Callum went to a little restaurant for lunch. He was waiting for his order. He overheard a waiter and a client arguing. The waiter claimed that the woman had ordered a special breakfast set and was now refusing to pay. Hmm. The woman said she'd only ordered a coffee. Detective Callum knew who was lying. Do you? It's afternoon. No one serves breakfast specials at this time. So, the waiter was lying. Miss Vidges called the police and reported that someone had broken into her house, tied her up, and robbed her. When police officers arrived, the house was a mess, and the woman was indeed tied to a chair. Still, the officers didn't believe that it was a real robbery. Why? If Miss Vidges was tied up and couldn't move, how did she manage to call the police? Her cell phone is too far away from her. Hmm. An elderly man had poor vision. He lived with his son, Mark, because he needed assistance. One day, the man was resting in his armchair while his son was preparing dinner. Suddenly, Mark heard glass shatter. He ran into the room and asked what had happened. The window was broken. His father told him that some dark-eyed, dark-haired young guy had thrown a stone into the window and then had run away. Mark didn't believe his father. Why? The man had poor vision. He couldn't see the boy, and, of course, he couldn't figure out the color of his hair and eyes. Miss Nebula Hayes left for vacation. While she was away, her home office got robbed. All the people whose fingerprints had been found in the office were interrogated. Celeste, Nebula's cousin, said that she'd been to the house just once because Miss Hayes needed her to send her a document from her office. Alyssa, the gardener, said that she'd been coming every third day to take care of the garden and plants. Cash, the cleaner, said that he'd come every Wednesday to clean the house. Who robbed the office?
It was the gardener. Celeste and Cash had some reason to be in the office, so their fingerprints aren't that suspicious. But why would Alyssa come there? As you see, there are no plants in the office. In a VIP club, a rich lady was robbed. Someone stole her diamond necklace. The police visited three main suspects and interrogated them. Paxton said that he'd been at the party. He even knew what necklace they were talking about, but he had nothing to do with the theft. Reagan said that she hadn't noticed any necklaces. Gaia said that she hadn't been to that party. She was too poor to afford to go to such clubs. Who's the criminal? It must be Gaia. She said that she was poor, but look at her huge house and her fancy car. How can she afford all this if she's poor? Let's take a little break and check how attentive you are. Look, here's a ball and three cups. I'll put the ball here in this cup in the middle. Your task is to watch the cups and then tell me where the ball is. Ready? Go! So where is the ball? Look, it's here. Did you get it? Okay, let's try this one. Now I have four cups, and I'll be moving faster. I put the ball right here. Watch it closely. So where do you think it is? It's in this cup. Let's make it super hard and see if you can get it now. Five cups, and I'll move them even faster than before. Ready? So where's the ball? It's right here. Chloe opened her locker and found an envelope. Inside there was a calendar and a note asking if she wanted to go to the prom. The note wasn't signed. There were just several numbers at the bottom. 25, 30, 24, 11, 26. Can you help the girl figure out who asked her out? The calendar is the key. You have to find all the numbers in the calendar and the first letters of the respective months will make up the name. So, 25 is circled in June. So it's a J. Number 30 is circled in April. So it's an A. 24 is in September. It's an S. 11 is in October, so we've got an O. And 26 is in November, N. The guy's name must be Jason. Hopefully Chloe knows him. Annika was poisoned, and Detective Callum was on the case. Hmm. One of the main suspects was Marcus Jones, Annika's sister's boyfriend, because someone had seen them together. Hmm. Good afternoon, Mr. Jones. I'm sorry to tell you this, but your girlfriend's sister was poisoned. Do you know anything about it? By the way, do you have any photos of her? Marcus said, Oh, poor Annika. She's such a good girl. Yes, I have pictures of my girlfriend and her sisters. Here it is. The detective looked at the photo and arrested Marcus. Why? In the picture, there are four girls. This means that Marcus's girlfriend has three sisters. Still, Marcus somehow knows exactly which one of them was poisoned. 